I think sometimes that, uh, ironically, on television, when you give a disclaimer, it has exact, exactly the opposite to the intended effect, and more people tune in than tune out. I'm going to say this as straight as I possibly can. I am begging you, if you're a parent and you've got kids there, that this subject is just too upsetting for your young children. Please get them out of the room or change the station. We urge you to exercise parental discretion. It has been established, as you have already seen on this program, in courts of law now, that human sacrifice is sometimes an element in rituals performed by people calling themselves Satanists. There is no longer any doubt about that, though just how often it actually is done is obviously impossible to know. The ideal sacrifice, we are told, apparently requires babies. And there are those. People in satanic sex, including mothers who have belonged, who tell of babies being bred for sacrifice. Take a look, please. Read what they do, Guy. They use blood in their rituals, and the blood that has the most power is baby's blood. In the classic horror film, Rosemary's Baby, Mia Farrow is drawn into the clutches of a satanic cult and is married to the devil. This is no dream. This is really happening. She conceives the Antichrist, providing the group with a living symbol of Satan to be worshipped and adored. God is dead! As sickening and unbelievable as it sounds, bearing children for use in satanic rituals may really be happening. My daughter, who I named Wendy, was sacrificed at birth with an upside-down cross and then taken outside and buried. Um, my son, they kept and let live till two years old, and then he was sacrificed. Michael and I had a son, and he was dedicated to Satan at birth. And at six months of age, he was sacrificed to Satan. It is most common for the heart to be taken from the child and offered to Satan. These women say they speak from personal experience. They claim to be breeders, forced by covens to bear children, both as a way for the cults to get new members and to find fresh victims for ritual murder. Did you give birth to infants who were sacrificed? To My first two. Or sacrificed. Or sacrificed. I was told it was the highest honor I could mm -hmm. ever do as a woman, was to sacrifice my first two. And you did that? I was so brainwashed, I believed the, their philosophy. Jackie tells us she was able to escape her satanic cult. Today, she helps other women, like Donna, who are trying to break free. You killed your babies? Um, take the skin off. You skin the baby? You take the baby's skin off? Do you feel remorse? Have you told the police? I had to do what I had to do, or I'd be killed like like the babies that, that, they, that they made me watch killed and that they put in my hand. They said, obey, or this is you. Jackie, you have some pictures drawn during the therapy sessions by the people who've been through this. Why don't you show me some of them? This picture is a person remembering skinning uh, children and babies and hanging it out to dry. And children, skinning. skinning them, taking the skin off alive while they, while they are alive and uh, skin them until they die. Oh. And that's how your babies died? They took a little patch about three by four off of her stomach, skinned her, and said, we'll skin you all the way if you talk or cry. You learn not to cry real fast. I don't cry. For their part, mainstream Satanists strongly deny these gruesome allegations. Zena is the daughter of Anton LaVey, founder of the modern-day Church of Satan. That's a popular misconception, too, is that children are sacrificed at the altar, that uh, animals are used for uh, sacrifices. And it's a horrible, horrible misconception. This is real hard for the police because they can never find proof, and that's because the bodies are sometimes consumed for communion, um, sometimes burnt, sometimes put in concrete. For proof, the women offered a few grisly photos. But as the Satanists are quick to point out, the images of death and decay are impossible to verify. These middle-class housewives that are worried that we want to abduct their children are barking up the wrong tree because we wouldn't want anything to do with their whole mediocre and corrupt lifestyle.
Because the charges are so bizarre, most mental health professionals distance themselves from the entire area of Satanism. But here in Denver, Colorado, the Bethesda Psychiatric Institute has become the first in the country to devote an entire department to treating the victims of ritual crime. Uh, Can we believe these stories of sacrifice? I believe we need to believe them. Uh, they sound bizarre. They, they sound uh, beyond the capacity of human beings. Uh, but the stories we receive are tremendously consistent. Is this an epidemic? Uh, I believe... Uh, Involvement in Satanism is increasing. Uh, I believe it is present in many communities around our country, and I believe it demands our attention. But somebody is apparently trying to discourage scrutiny. We've talked to therapists who treat ritual abuse victims, and they tell us of the threats they've received. I have direct knowledge of both death threats on a therapist and an attempt to end that therapist's life, which was unsuccessful. Here in Chicago, a group of well-known therapists from all over the country had the courage to share horror stories of threats and intimidation. Therapists have been directly threatened in ways that are quite alarming to them. The patient indicated to me that she wished to sacrifice the child with which she was pregnant. Naturally, I wasn't too enthusiastic about this. Uh, shortly after this uh, occurred, I start, started to get telephone death threats. One of the things that I would add is that we are now hearing these reports from literally hundreds of therapists in every part of the United States. Someone out there is telling us to back off. Still, the greatest toll seems to be on the women who say that they have bred babies. Babies that were sacrificed for Satan. I will probably have nightmares tonight about it. As I have about my Joey that I have been talking about, I wake up screaming for him now in the middle of the night. I dream that he's lost and I'm trying to find him. Sickening, so incredibly outrageous, so incredibly unbelievable. But Zena LaVey, are these women lying? You have to understand that everything, every single thing you've um, given as examples of Satanism here are completely from a Christian standpoint. That everything you've um, put forth as being considered satanic is not considered satanic by my standard or my are definition these women of Satanism. Lying. Well, have the bodies been found? Where are they? Cheryl Horton, who joins us via satellite from Los Angeles, Cheryl Horton. Zena LaVey, a, a Satanist who, A, points out that this is not in keeping with well, her teaching, but B, says, where is the proof? Where is the proof? Why is there no proof if what you're saying is true? Hi, Geraldo. There's no proof for, for a fact of one thing. They burn the bodies. They either do that, they'll chop them up and dump them in the ocean, or they'll pour them in concrete, or they take and they use them for communion and eat them and then make bones out of the tools. Okay. Cheryl, listen. These the stories, are doing listen, let me, let me interrupt you. Cheryl, okay. please, let me interrupt you. The stories dump in the ocean, chop up the bodies, these things, they sound like they can't be happening. Ted Gunnerson, respected law enforcement professional recently, or retired now from the FBI, former regional director of Los Angeles. Do you, sir, believe that these dreadful allegations of babies being sacrificed are true? I absolutely believe it, without any doubt based on the information that's been given to me across the country by numerous survivors and by confidential sources and informants. Then why don't you name these people and arrest them? Never a name, never an arrest. These women come out of a group and they insist that they know the people in the group and yet they do not identify these large mysterious cults. Name them and arrest them and get them off the street. Does he not make a valid point? He makes a valid point. The problem with that is, number one, police officers don't believe it. I may believe it. You may believe it. Some people in your audience may believe it. They don't believe it. Number two, if you decide to investigate these people, you have to, number one, handle it from an undercover operation. If you put an undercover operation into effect, then you have, in a, in, in a sense, your own police officers become involved in these heinous crimes. And they are, of course, become murderers. And in addition to that, if you do decide to investigate these people, it's a, it's a lot of work. And many law enforcement officers are apathetic and uh, don't want to get involved. Ladies and gentlemen, you have heard this. 
The debate here could rage over this issue alone for hours and hours and hours. Michael Aquino is right when he says there have not been any successful prosecutions for this horrible allegation. Ted Gunnerson is a, a sincere man with a good reputation who says that there are difficulties in the prosecution. Still, the point is it has never been proven in a court of law. Obviously, it needs more investigation, but if these things are happening, then there should be a national task force of federal and state and local cops working together to prove or disprove. Because this is just unacceptable, this impasse. Coming up, we're going to have warning signs you should watch for, parents. And all of our guests will be available for a final discussion about Satanism after this break.